according to your will. According to your will. My life is not my own. Welcome to our Bible study here at Bible Talk. We want to welcome you in to join myself, Alice, and Tim. Hi, everyone. Here in Saddleworth in England to our ongoing study in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, we welcome you to come in. But I ask you to come in without any preconceived notions, without, without any uh, agenda, so to speak. Just come in with the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and... Let's see what Jesus has to say in this wonderful, wonderful sermon. Hallelujah. Um, I, I do want to remind you that all of the previous chapters or, or sessions of this study are available online at BibleTalk.com. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't seen some of them or all of them, we invite you to go do that. Invite others to go see them. Um, test what I say against the scripture. Not against traditions, not against what you may have thought, but we, we come here to learn. Uh, what what Jesus is teaching us about living righteously. Amen. That's the goal. The goal of our instruction, Paul wrote to Timothy, is love. And our desire, because love never fails, our desire is to, to grow in our understanding of God's love for us and to take that love and use it to touch other lives. God. So that's our <clears throat> purpose in being here in His Word. Uh, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that we can, that we can come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, gathered in his name, gathered in his presence, knowing that your Spirit is here, not only among us, but in us, uh, that, we, that he would lead us into all truth, because our desire is to know the truth, Lord, that we might be free, free to serve you, to worship you. So we just praise you and thank you for this time that we have together in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we're in Matthew chapter 7. Yay. Um, and we're going to start at verse 3. Having left off in verse 2, that seems fairly logical. <laughs> God is a God of good order after Amen. all. All right? And this gets more and more interesting as we get on in this. Um, not, that the, not that one before was not interesting, but... This is serious material for serious times and for serious people. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength, but that joy comes from being serious about God and the things of God, especially the Word of God. So let's get into this. And if you have any questions or comments, um, write to us at office at BibleTalk.com. We are blessed to hear from you, and if you, if you think that I'm mistaken about something, please Feel free to write to me. But remember, Paul wrote to Timothy and said that the Word of God, all, all Scripture is God-breathed and profitable for correction. So if you want to correct me, correct me with the Word, not your opinion. Okay? That's right. All right. Matthew 7, verse 3. I'm starting there. I'm going to read through all the way to 5. Jesus said, Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, and behold, the log is in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. The speck in your brother's eye and the log in your own. Mm. It says in Psalm 2 that he who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord scoffs at them, those old sinners. I don't know if you ever pictured God laughing. But if, if, if you want to see a perfect sense of humor, um, by the way, it says in, in Proverbs, in a merry heart maketh good medicine, you know. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I can, you might have joy. A lot of people don't think of this, but Jesus Christ had a perfect sense of humor, mm -hmm. being truly a man and truly perfect, right? Mm -hmm. There's just something here, you know, the way he talks. It's like saying to the Pharisees, you know, you strain and, and, and the gnats, but swallow camels. Right. Here he says, you know, take the speck out of, you know, you want to take the speck out of your brother's eye, you got a log in your own. Jesus Christ was very down to earth. Yes, he was. Mm. Now that's a great expression for Jesus Christ, because mm. he is literally God come down, down to, to earth. earth. Yeah. That's right. He wasn't, uh -huh. I, 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 he wasn't highfalutin. 
He, he didn't put on airs. No. He didn't try and impress people. No. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ. He doesn't have to be anything else. Yeah. All right? So um, he was down to earth, and to put it bluntly, he was generally blunt. Yes, he was. Mm. He was given to speaking the truth in love, which we're supposed to do, as it says in Ephesians 4.15, mm -hmm. without any attempt to be politically correct. Right. Or he, he didn't come with flattery and yeah. smooth speech. Which, by the way, there's plenty of word about that we should not. Exactly. But he, he often seemed not to have any concern about the feelings of his listeners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was so blunt, right? The simple and harsh truth is that Jesus was bringing words of eternal life. Remember, that's what the what the apostles said. Remember, when people were leaving him, his where, disciples where were leaving we go? because his teaching was difficult. And they said to him, you have the words of eternal life. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. It's eternal life to man's spirit. It brings death to the flesh. Amen. Mm. Remember that the flesh is not the body. When we talk about the flesh, we're not talking about our human body. No. The, the, when we talk about the flesh, we're talking about that old fallen human nature that came down mm. to us from Adam. Okay. Right. By the way, your flesh is dying, no matter it's, which. It's deteriorating no, as we yes, sit here, uh, being corrupted, right? But it's like this is a hard, harsh truth that we don't often deal with. And I want to deal with that a little bit here. Is the fact that God's words of eternal life bring life to our spirit, but death to our flesh. That's right. Yeah. That's All right. right? Mm. Paul wrote to the Galatians in, in Galatians 5.17 and said this, For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. There is a constant warfare going on between your fleshly human nature and your spirit, which has been given new life. Yeah. It's a battle. It's a war. It's a war to the death. So what's happened is, you know, think about the, the, the occasion when Jesus was speaking to a Pharisee. And as he was often wont to do, mm -hmm. he's being very, very blunt. You know, he called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs filled with dead men's bones, mm -hmm. snakes and vipers, right, right? right? So he's talking to this one. And as, as he was talking to and blasting, so to speak, this Pharisee, in Luke 11, 45, it says it was a lawyer there. Mm -hmm. Now, the lawyers were those who were studied in the law. Yeah. We're not talking about the guy down the street who's an ambulance chaser. Mm -hmm. We're talking the lawyers yeah. in Jesus' day were people who knew the Mosaic law mm -hmm. and were skilled at that, right? So one of the lawyers said to him in reply, Teacher, when you say this, you insult so us too. So mm -hmm. Jesus has given it to this Pharisee. Mm -hmm. And there's this lawyer sitting there. And mm -hmm. it says he replied... It's interesting that they use the word reply, because Jesus wasn't talking to him. Yes. But he was hearing it coming to yes, him. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, I mean, we hear things, and we know mm -hmm. that it's us, right? Yeah, yeah. But he said, when you say this, you insult us too. Yeah. Well, both the Pharisee and the lawyer, as was the case with Pharisees and lawyers, always made a point of professing how much they loved Scripture. Yes. And yet... The very same scripture says this, Great peace have they who love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's, right. That's Psalm mm -hmm. 119, verse 165. Mm -hmm. right? These people were taking offense. That's basically what the lawyer said. He said, don't you know when you say this, you're offending us? Mm -hmm. Well, they're not supposed to take offense. Yeah. Why? Because dead people don't take offense. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I, I suggest this often, and, and you know, obviously it's, I'm being a little bit facetious, but think about it. If you went to a funeral home and you went up to a casket and looked at the person laying in the casket and said to them, boy, you Sulking. are looking yeah. ugly today, how offended, offended are they going to get? No offense. No. They can't because they're dead. All right? All right? Well, mm -hmm. you know, Paul says that we have died and our life is hidden with Christ and God. Yeah. Have we truly? Have we died to that flesh? Have we died to that old Ad, Adam spirit that we came into this world with? We have to mm -hmm. let it go. Because Christ's word are there 
to kill that flesh. Mm -hmm. And if we've died, we'll not take offense at anything. Right? The other thing is, it says, the offense can't even find you because it says your life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Yeah. For we have died and our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So it just bounces over. Well, it shouldn't even be able to find you. Oh. You know? So when we take offense, that's a good indication. It's like a warning light in a car. You know, you have these little warning lights, you know, the engine light, the fuel light, the oil light. If something's going wrong, a little light comes on. Or, mm -hmm. In well, the States, we call those idiot lights. Idiot lights, yes, <laughs> in the cars. Well, this is kind of like God's idiot light. Yeah. yeah. If you take offense, bing, 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 there's that red light flashing in your face saying, hey, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. Not the person that offended you. Yeah. That's, that's between them and the Lord. But if you take offense, then, it's you. then you've got a problem. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. warning light is going on. Because what that is, is it means that your flesh is rising up. And that flesh yeah. is not in, indeed not dead. Okay? Our flesh wants to hide from all correction, from all exposure of its weaknesses and its failings. Right? right. That's what our flesh wants to yes. do. Yes. Yeah. That's why we have the example of King David, David the psalmist, mm -hmm. David, right? Mm -hmm. A man after God's own heart. David prayed this, let the righteous smite me in kindness and reprove me. It is, he's, he's praying for discipline. Mm -hmm. Right. He said, is oil upon the head, do not let my head refuse it. Yeah. That's Psalm 141 verse five. So David is praying that God will bring discipline into his life, reproof into his life, correction into his life. Yeah. And he's saying, because he knows what a man he is. So he says, don't let my head refuse it. Because our natural instinct is, when somebody brings this quote-unquote harsh word, like mm -hmm. Jesus would do, this blunt word, this word spoken in truth and in love, but it, it, it zings the flesh. We have to pray, don't, don't let my head reject that mm -hmm. we've got to train ourselves to receive correction to want disciple discipling in our lives mm -hmm. discipline in our lives david was seeking god's discipline not hiding from it yeah all right I, that's that's really important see the problem is we have become so politically correct we're so concerned with with hurting somebody's feelings yes, yes. Uh, is that not offending yes. somebody we're so afraid of offending people mm -hmm that we dance around things and we don't speak the truth in love. We don't say the things that need to be said. You know, I say, we, Paul wrote to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and he said, in the last days, perilous times will come. Yeah. These are perilous, we dangerous, are. dangerous yes. times. Mm. And these are days when we need good fellowship. Yeah. We need such good fellowship, we need to have people around us who will love us enough mm -hmm. To say these things that need to be yeah, said. Right. Even though, yes, they're going to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Unless your feelings are dead. Yeah. And our feelings should be dead. And if it's not, praise God, it's just another step in the process. Yeah. We know what, what has to be taken care of, right. what has to be dealt with. Yes. But like I said, and I'm talking about in the body of Christ, in the church, we have gotten to the place where we are politically correct. We have gotten to the place where we are so conscious. We're so worldly. Of, of not hurting anybody's feelings. Yeah. That we don't speak the truth in love. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I've shared this before. I don't you know, know during the course of the study. I was so blessed. Uh, in the early days when I was first saved. Mm -hmm. and, and I was out ministering. Just sharing the gospel. And God put me together with a, with a fellow. His name was Joe Sparks. Mm-hmm. He was a fireman, a New York City fireman. <laughs> what a name, huh? Yeah, yeah Sparks. He was a fireman, yeah. New York City, who actually was on pension because he had been. This guy, I just tell you this, because this, yeah. this is so cool. He had been severely injured in a fire, mm -hmm. to the degree that he was given a full pension yeah. and taken off the force. Right. And then he got saved, yeah. and whatever the damage was that had been done to him by this fire, God healed. Right. So Joe went back to the city in New York and said, well, I don't need the money anymore because I'm healed. And they said, okay, 
Well, so it's shows, the doctors, yeah. you know, give us the yeah. thing from the doctor saying you're healed. He said, well, no, Jesus healed. Well, the New York City mm -hmm. government was not about to take Joe's word that God healed him. So they're still paying him to the rest of his money. Yeah. They yeah. refuse to stop paying him. But he because, did his best, yeah. Because yeah. He, they don't want to recognize the fact that Jesus healed him. That's right. But Joe was a man filled with the boldness of the mm -hmm. Lord. And I was so blessed that God put me together with this brother mm -hmm. for a brief period of time. Because it was early in, in my walk as a yeah, minister. Being formed. And I'd go out with Joe, and Joe and I would share the gospel with people. And if mm -hmm. I said something wrong, if I said something that wasn't accurate about the Word of God, yeah. I don't care who was around, how many people were around, Joe would jump on me. He would get on me, there's an expression like white on rice. Mm -hmm. He would jump on me like ugly on a stick. He, I mean, it didn't matter who was there. He would not tolerate correct you. me saying something that was inaccurate. Right. Now, a lot of people would have just got, whoa, I'm not, what am I doing with this guy? And yeah. walked away. Yes, yes. He wasn't gentle. No, he wasn't no, gentle at all. Yeah. But I saw that as a blessing in my life. It didn't yeah. feel good mm -hmm. because it was killing my feelings. Yeah. Yes. But it was discipline. But I yes. recognized it as a blessing from God because oh, yeah. I learned early on, right. yeah. be careful with every word that, that proceeds down. from your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? So, you know, I it, it gets to the place where... How, how do we deal with people like this? I mean, I just had an occasion just recently where, um, you know, I, I brought a word to a dear brother who mm -hmm. I, I love very, very much, who's a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, and he said he's a senior pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, that's his, on his title. He's the senior pastor. Mm -hmm. So I asked him why, he, why he's a senior pastor. Mm -hmm. And he started to tell me. I said, I don't, want, I, don't, I don't want to know. Because I do know. Senior pastor means you're a little higher. Well, I said, pride, yeah. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he might increase. Yeah. To whatever degree that we get a little higher, right, right. Christ gets a little lower. Mm. Yeah. And, and immediately, he started to give me, you know... Excuses. And, but thank God, this Back brother hands. stopped dead in his tracks and said, you're right. He said, I'll take it away. I, I know that other people have seen this. Mm. But nobody wanted to say it to him because yeah. you're going to hurt his feelings. Yeah, I mean, he's a faithful brother. He's serving the Lord, mm -hmm. and you know, it's like somebody comes he in and questions. So yeah. yeah, I love him. I love him enough to say that to him, and I want to be in fellowship with people who love me enough that they, they see me doing something wrong that they'll do they'll the tell same. Me. They'll do yeah. the same yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It's not intended to feel good. It's intended to heal good. Yeah. It's intended to heal yeah. you of pride, which is a killer to your spirit. Yeah. All right. Speaking the truth in love yes. isn't intended to feel good. It is intended to heal, heal good. good. Yes, yes. Okay. And so you may think, well, this, this is kind of rough, you know, I mean, go out and really get in somebody's face. But there's kind of a bumper, kind of a shock absorber here that protects us from everybody running around like drill sergeants. Mm -hmm. Shouting insults at one another. <laughs> right. Okay. No. And that's in the balance of the verse. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Now, we've right. talked in the past couple of weeks, uh, before you blessedly help another, a brother or a sister, by pointing out their faults. <laughs> yeah, look at yourself. Yeah. You're to examine yourself hmm. closely. Right. Okay, and when you examine yourself closely, when then you see the log in your own eye, and you deal with it, you will be able, continuing, you know, to do what Paul said. Remember, I wrote, I quoted from Paul here, um, in Colossians, didn't I? No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. for you have died in your life as in Christ and God. That's oh. Colossians three, right? So if you continue on with what Paul says in Colossians, I'm going to read from 12 to 14 in that same third chapter. It says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is a perfect bond of unity. Well, Christ walked in all of that. 
He had that heart of compassion. He had kindness, humility, gentleness. Yeah. And most things are the fruit of the Spirit. So when I talk about getting in somebody's face, speaking the truth in love, once you've looked at yourself, because you want to know something? You'll not have to look hard to find faults in your own life. True. That is very true. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. And when, we're, when we are equally you know, ready to correct ourselves, and we do, mm -hmm. and you realize that that person that you're seeing with, a, with, a, with that speck in their eyes mm -hmm. is you know, maybe a little better than you are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're to think more highly of one another, right? Then you can go now, when you deal with it in your own life, it'll put you in a place where you can go and deal with them with compassion, with love. Yeah. You know, there's the old expression, but for the grace of God, there yeah, go well, I. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So that's God's plan to put kind of this bumper, that shock absorber, mm -hmm. to protect yeah. us from running around like little drill sergeants, you know, insulting mm -hmm. one another. Yeah. Because then you'll be able to speak the truth mm -hmm. in love, no matter how hard the truth is. Yeah. And we've got to get to that place. But people don't like to be confrontational because that is no. confrontational. It's very confrontational. Who is more confrontational than God, Jesus? I know. John the Baptist? Paul the Apostle? I mean, these are confrontational guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. Look at John the Baptist. I mean, Jesus said in Matthew 11, nobody before him had a greater ministry than that. And boy, you can't get much more confrontational than John the Baptist. I think the reason... When I'm just thinking about it now, being confrontational is always the reason why we don't want to do it because we, we don't want them thinking badly of us. Okay. Well, so it again, goes back focus, to pride. Yeah, the focus back goes yeah. back on ourselves. Right. If we truly cared, it wouldn't matter to us. I mean, yeah, we well, really were, right. Yes, if agree, we right. really cared about that person, we would say and tell them regardless because we, we love them and we don't yeah. want them to keep going yeah. down that path. Yeah. You know, there's, a, there's an old expression here, not here, there. Alabama. Across the pond in the United <laughs> States, uh, your freedom of speech stops where, well, it's like they say, you know, you can't go into a movie theater and holler fire. Yeah. Right. Well, unless, of course, there's a fire. Of course. Yeah. And, you know, if, it, if you see a fire and there's danger to all the lives of the people in there, and they walk in and say, mm. oh, gee, I, don't, I might be you know, embarrassed. Yeah. Well, no, no, it's not, you know, they paid good money to come in here, they're sitting there, they're enjoying the movie, the movie's only halfway over, and you start thinking about, well, you know, oh, there's a fire. Well, you you walk in and you it's roar strange. at the top of your yeah. lungs. Yeah. Fire. Because you're calling them from danger. danger. Yeah. Right. Right. If you see your little child and your little child, you just look out and you see that he's headed for the road. It's it's strange. Strange. Yeah. You yeah. scream. Yeah, whatever. You, yeah. don't, you, you don't think about, well, is this going to hurt his feelings or not? No. We have to get to that place where we realize this is life and death. And we have to understand yeah, how much true. danger is, that yeah. person is in. There. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Sin is life-threatening danger. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and if we see that. our brother sin, and we've talked about this with, here in the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, this is not a verse out of context. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Right. Mm. You know, yes. And it's like, here's the plan. We're not to be judges of people. But we are, are am I my brother's keeper? We are to be there mm -hmm. to help one another. When we see one fall... You don't you don't yeah. say, well gee, I don't want to I don't want to point out the fact that he fell because he's liable to be embarrassed. Mm. No, you reach out a hand and you say, Here, let me help you up. Mm. This is what we've got to do with one another. We've got to get to that place where we are speaking the truth in love and just you know have enough love for one another where we are willing to confront and be confrontational with one another. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Jesus was. Yes, yes. Jesus most assuredly was. He could be incredibly blunt. I mean, think, you know, yeah, the, the apostles. I, I, one example is, you know, the, the, they're all going across the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. And a storm arises. Mm -hmm. And the apostles, even, remember, a bunch of these guys, they're fishermen. They know the sea. Yeah, right? yeah. that's right. They're but here's crazy. Jesus sleeping, right? So they went to Jesus and they said to him, don't you care we're perishing? You know what that's called? Ah, it's called prayer. That's right. <laughs> they, went, they went to talk because prayer is conversation with the Lord. That's yes. Right. So they went, and you know his response to them was, "Oh, you little of little faith." Mm. Where's the compassion? I mean, this, this be happened. Afraid. Don't yeah. be afraid. Yeah. It's okay. I'm oh, here poor with baby. You. Yeah. Where's the poor yeah. babies and this stuff? <laughs> you know, I, I I know my flesh. I, I'm glad that you don't. At least not as well as I do. 
But the fact is, it's like I know that when, when we first got married, or when we first got married and were saved, saved yeah. you know, if I wasn't feeling good, I would love to be pampered. To be pampered. I don't want to, you know, if I have a little cough, <laughs> I want to lay in bed all day and relax, not go to work. And I want to Alice him up and say, oh, poor baby, you want some hot chocolate and take, that's what I want. That's what my flesh wants. But I told her, right? Yes, you did. I said, I don't want to have what my flesh wants. I want what my spirit needs. So I said, if you see me acting like that, looking for the poor babies, I said, I want you to walk up to me. Look right in my eyes with all the love you have and say, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Don't pamper me. We're pampering one another at the danger of our souls. Yeah. That's because we're so, that's the, um, what we're so used to doing. No, it's what yeah. we've been, it's the habit. But, it, but it's what the world it's, is conditioning yeah, us to do. do. We've been led into a false sense of security. Absolutely. Absolutely. And right. we're being told that it's wrong to be that harsh. Yeah. It's wrong. It is not wrong. It is right to speak the truth in love. And you're speaking the truth because you love. Yes, because you love. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, just think about this. I mean, you know, I can't. I'm not trying to convince anybody to go out and start talking this way to others. <laughs> right. But I am trying to convince you to have the same heart and the same head as yeah. the as David did. Yeah. Because if if I'm not trying to encourage you to go out and do it. I am trying to encourage you to go out and seek it in your own life. Mm. Yeah. To yeah. seek having people. Because remember, David is praying that, that God will use people to come into his life and bring reproof, bring correction, bring that mm. discipline. And then says, and don't let my head don't let my head refuse turn it. refuse it and turn away from it. Yeah. So I am trying to get us all to the place where it becomes our desire to have God's discipline and training in our life. That we would be the people that he wants us to be. Yes. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I was a spoiled kid. I, I'm an only child. You don't have to help me with this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I was. I was. I, I'm, this is a fact. I mean, I was an only child. I was pampered. I kind of grew up in, you know, in, in posh circumstances. And you know, I had a nanny when I was a little kid. And uh, the the. I didn't have a lot of I didn't have a lot of discipline. I had a lot of love from my mom, my mother and father. I did, but I would say to a great degree is that love lacked discipline because they hadn't been trained in the word by any means. No. Okay. And then I went to school. I went to a, you know a, an all boys Catholic prep school uh, with Irish Christian brothers, and they brought this in, discipline into my life that I had not experienced before. Mm. Bless you, Brother TPO Dwyer. Uh, you know, I mean, you didn't do your homework. Forget about oh, it. It's uh, off the head. Through the day. <laughs> and from there, I went into the military. And in the military, I experienced discipline like I had never experienced before. And, and most, well, I, I don't know if most is the right word, but I would say most of the guys I knew, they don't, that's, that's a hard transition to make. Yeah. Going from yeah. civilian life to all of a sudden, somebody tells you, Everything that you have to do, and when they tell you to do it, they expect you to do it now. Right, yeah, yeah. You know, you don't. It's not like it's not well, just a minute. It's not like mommy saying, you know, it's time to go to bed, and you say just a minute, just a minute, just a mm -hmm. minute. They tell you to do something, and pow, you got to do it right then, right mm -hmm. there. And that's a, that's a hard transition, but I found that I liked it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I that discipline well, it's brought beneficial. Well, it's more than that. It brings good order. Right. And nobody likes chaos. It's like the centurion Except that came to Jesus. Yeah. He had that discipline. That, authority. that discipline was an understanding of authority. Mm -hmm. And Jesus equated that understanding of authority with faith. Right. Yeah. So, you know, it was like all of a sudden. So I'm, we must be disciplined in faith. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I found that to be a real blessing in my life. It changed my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I will tell you this. I mean, while I was, I was unsaved at the time. I was extremely unsaved at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I see how God has used that training in my life to show me how beneficial discipline is. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it says, Paul wrote to Timothy again and said that, you know, God has not given us a spirit of timidity, mm -hmm. of weakness, but a boldness, a power, yes. a sound mind. That sound mind is discipline. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things, self-control. 
That's discipline. And that's one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to have that in our lives. We live in an undisciplined world in undisciplined times. Yeah. You know, it says in Judges a number of times that when there was no king in Israel, every man did what was right in his own eyes. Mm. Right? See, it's like, okay, everybody does what they want when they want. We don't live in that time. We live in a time when we understand that there's not only a king, but there's a king of kings. Mm -hmm. There's a king of glory. There is a Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. And that means that he has complete authority in our lives. Mm -hmm. So when he tells us to do something, we're not supposed to sit around and question him. No. Yeah. We're not supposed to try and change his mind. Or figure yeah. it out. Or we're supposed okay. to respond. Yeah. And that, that's ever, mm. ever so important. Isn't it, do, do you think it's true, though, with people that have been under discipline or, and are disciplined, that they can't, they have, they're less tolerable? Tolerable? With, tolerable with, of other people. That tolerant. Less tolerant. You know, tolerant. <laughs> tolerant. Well, no, I, I think, yes, I, I, I would say that to some degree. I mean, I, I don't, I've never done a, you know, I don't have a scientific study behind me on this or anything, but the fact of the matter is, when you the more disciplined you are, the more number one you you understand its importance. Yes. You uh, the more you understand its benefit, uh, and the less tolerant you become of a lack of discipline. Right. And you would expect yeah. others to, I mean, have, with reading the word and everything, to have that discipline. So that's what you're, and you'd be, you would be expecting it from other people. And when you're well, not you know, it, it, I, I don't know that this is interesting for a Bible study, but it just so happens that uh, uh, a number of years ago, I was invited to take a job as the manager of church relations for a Christian publishing house. And when I went there, they still asked me to, to fill out, which I didn't understand, a, a personality. Oh, mm -hmm. right, yeah. yes, test. yes, yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, I never, actually had never taken one. Uh, well, ex except in the military, and that's kind of a whole different ball game. But I thought it was interesting because one of the things that this test showed, I and mean, most strongly, was that I was a very disciplined person, mm -hmm. and I expected I had a, a high set of standards, mm -hmm. and I placed high demands on people that work for me. Mm -hmm. But I placed higher demands on myself. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, you don't do that to be a disciplinarian. I mean, no. that 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 term. You don't do that to put a burden on people. You yeah. do it because you know that's how you get the best results. And yeah. not only the best results that's for the company, the job done. Exactly. but it's also the best results for the people. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I left the military. I had originally gone in. You know, I, I, I flew as an air crewman in the Navy. I went in to, with a desire to be a, a pilot. And uh, I had intended to make it a career and become a... I, my desire was to become a fighter pilot. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, at the end of the day, I was in during when Vietnam started mm -hmm. and things changed. And the reason I left was because I saw a lack of discipline. I saw discipline in the military collapsing mm. and not being what, what I had gone through personally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't tolerate that. I found that just something that I couldn't, couldn't deal well with, uh, as particularly as an unsaved person. Mm. But, but the fact of the matter is, God's desire is... To make us a blessing to one another. Yeah. What we need, what we need is this. You may recognize the scripture. As iron sharpens iron, so one man another. Mm -hmm. Well, iron sharpens iron by rubbing, rubbing against. Yeah. Yeah. Friction. By friction and grating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and a lot of times that's what we were trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid, you don't grate against that person, you want friction. Yeah. But that's what does the job. Mm -hmm. Uh, and these these are hard truths, you know. And again, we're living in a pampered time. Um, I grew up in in a time when there was this transition from my my parents, where people that grew up, you know, were coming into adulthood, were adults in the Second World War. Yeah, which was a time of great sacrifice around yes. the world. Yes, it was. Yeah, it really was. And for better or for worse, probably for worse, because of their lack of understanding about love, what they did is they, they brought forth a generation where they said, you know, give them everything they want because mm. they thought that was love. Yeah. Mm. And it became the me generation where there were mm. no boundaries. Yeah. And that didn't work out well at all. Not at all. No. Yeah. So discipline is love. 
Mm-hmm. That, that's the whole point of this thing. But like I said, you know, Jesus came and he, he would say things like this. You know, he would say, you know, but think about this. I mean, this is, this, God is love. Yes, he is. You know, he gets in somebody's face and say, hey, you better take the log out of your eye before you try and take the speck out of your brother's. Look at you, you nunkin head. That's the paraphrase. You know, <laughs> you strain at gnats and swallow candles. He walks up to the highest muckety mucks of the, the God's chosen people in religion, who are all fancy and dressed and are always looking spiritual. He says, "You're whitewashed tombs filled with dead men's bones." That's not very complimentary. No, but <laughs> listen, Jesus not only offended a lot of people people who did not love his word and his law. That's right. But he is the rock of of offense over which men stumble. stumble. That's what the word of God says. So, you know, be very prayerful about what I'm saying. I mean, don't go out today and see who you can offend. I mean, that's not the purpose of this. (laughs) But do, first of all, start examining yourself to see what logs you have in your own eyes. That's number one. And then, when you do that, because remember what he said, okay? He said, when you do that, then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So it's not that he's saying that we shouldn't. Yeah. He's saying, but you've got to, this is a precondition. Before you take the, try and take that yeah. speck out of your brother's eye, Get the do this because it yeah. makes you equipped, positioned, and yeah. prepared to do it to in a godly it. fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so go speak the truth in love, no matter how hard that truth is. All right, verse 6, Matthew 7, 6. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So is, is Jesus saying, okay, listen, what are the pearls? Pearls are what's precious, right? right? What's holy. Mm-hmm. These are the things. We're ambassadors for Christ. We bring the knowledge of the presence of Christ Jesus into every place. What do we have that's precious? You know, Paul says in, in uh, Colossians, not to the Colossians, to the Corinthians, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yeah. What treasure do we do? Do we have? We have the Word of God. We have the love of God. Mm-hmm. That's the treasure, yeah. right? So is he saying, okay, don't bring that love, don't don't bring that word to certain people? It sounds like that's what he's saying. Yeah, he is saying. That. Now, what you have to be very, very prayerful about is who are those That's certain fine. people? Exactly, yeah. It is certainly not just sinners, no. because you no. know. Okay. That's who we're supposed yeah. to. Yeah. 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 Right. If it, listen, if, who we if God didn't to. bring the word to me through somebody yeah. That's right. when I was a sinner, this is how we know what love is. It yeah. says we know love by this that while we were yet sinners, He He went to the cross for us, right? right. But listen to Philippians. Uh, what Paul wrote is the Philippians. Philippians three two. Beware of the dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the false circumcision. Mm-hmm. So he uses his word dogs there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same way that Jesus is using it here. Right? Mm-hmm. We're obviously to bring the good news of Jesus and the love of God to the unsaved. Yes. yes. Or how else will they get yes. saved? Right. Okay? Let me read you, just so you know this, Romans 10. I'm going to read from verse 12 to 15. Mm-hmm. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. For whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of uh, him who brings good news, the tidings of good news. So, no, it's not about, you know, not just not going out to the lost and sinners. Mm-hmm. Jesus dined with sinners. He brought the good news to sinners. But I, here's what I want to, I've really prayed about this, because this is kind of a difficult thing. It's just complex, because okay. I'm yeah. struggling to understand but, Okay, so who then should we not bring this to? Okay. In, in Proverbs, Solomon, over and over, I, uh, maybe a dozen times, talks repeatedly about the folly the foolishness of bringing wisdom to scoffers or scorners, it says in the right, yeah, okay. I just want to read you a few of these verses, okay? In, and these are all from Proverbs. In, in nine, chapter 9, verse 7 and 8, it says, He who corrects a scoffer 
gets dishonor for himself. And he who reproves a wicked man gets insults for himself. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. In chapter 20, verse 24, verse 9, it says, The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to man. In chapter 13, verse 1, it says, A wise son accepts his father's discipline, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Okay? Scoffers. So they're scoffers. Uh, what's, a, what's a scoffer, right? That's what Paul called dogs in his letter to the Philippians. They're the same people in spirit that Jesus dealt with in the temple when he said, you're of your father the devil. They were scoffers. They were scorners. They, mm. they, they were rejecting what he said. Right. All right? So listen to this from John chapter 8. I'm going to read from verse 42. Jesus said to them, this is in the temple, remember, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and have come from God. For I have not even come on my own initiative, but he sent me. Mm. Why do you not understand what I am saying? It is because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. Whatever he speaks a lie, whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. So, with, with that incident there in the temple, you know, it takes a bit of conversation with people to determine who the scoffers are, who the ones who are indeed of their father the devil. Yeah. I mean, you know, he, he, so, so are they saying that those people cannot be saved? I think he's saying they will not be saved. Okay, fine. Yeah. Okay, there's a difference between cannot and will not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in John 3, 16, so it says, For God seen. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, yes. so that whosoever will. Yeah, yeah, good point. And, and there's this yeah. will. So these scoffers are the people who have rejected, who have heard the word. So they have to have yeah. heard it at right. one point. Yeah, and just thought and, no. And hearing it now, what they yeah. do is they scorn it. Yes. They scoff at it. And they mock it. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and this is these are the people that Jesus is saying, okay, then don't cast your pearls before them. There right. comes a time. Because, uh, yeah. It says, you know, there's a time. Don't answer a, a, a mocker of, according to his folly. According to his folly in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. um, now, now it doesn't always mean that they're lost forever. Or yeah. I mean, you can't judge that, right? No. I, I remember one time years ago. There had been a couple uh, that I pastored. Mm, I was just thinking. About and they were they were really having difficulties, and they were always just getting at each other and, and yeah. doing stuff. And I would continually just bring the word to them right, yeah. in correction, constantly. So one day I was at their house, and they were going at it. And the husband turned to me at the while, and he looked at me. He said, why aren't you saying anything? And I said, because the word of God says, don't answer a mocker according to his folly. God told me, stop. Don't tell him again. Answer a fool according to his folly. A fool according to his folly. did that day the trick. It, 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 it shook them yes, up. It did. It really, really it shook them yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was like God saying, okay, stop. You're not hearing yeah. my word. You know, yeah. uh, and, it, and it did, because it, there comes a time. But So be careful. Don't take this to mean that we're not to bring the love of God and the Word of God to sinners. That's yeah. not what it means at all. But there, there comes a time when you have the discernment of the Holy Spirit within you, yes. right, which is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that you know, like Jesus did with these people at the temple, that, boy, they are of their father the devil. That's the choice that they have made. Yes. Um, and then, you know what? You stop giving them the Word. Right. You, you take it and you plant that seed of, of God's Word somewhere where it will be profitable. That's I mean, It is a hard thing. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, it's not just hard to figure out who to do this with and who not to do this with. Yeah. It's like if God puts you in that position, it's not a pleasant thing no. to think. that It's almost like, okay, God's back and away. At what level thing. do you make the decision to no. back off? But it's like Paul. There was somebody in Paul's ministry, you know, it mm -hmm. says that he literally, this person, this person was attacking the gospel, um, yeah. was re rejecting the gospel. Yeah. And Paul said he gave him over to the devil. Yeah. 
Yes. For the destruction of his flesh. Right. Not his soul. No. Because again, it's like where we started in this study. It's the flesh. It's, battle. you know, the flesh has to die right. in yes, order for the so. spirit right. to live. Mm-hmm. A lot of people come to me and say, you know, oh, pray for my this, my, my you know, this friend, this relative, that, that they'll be saved. Are you sure you want me to pray for that? Because mm-hmm. I don't pray the way other people do. I mean, you know, people, it's like, okay, I hope he goes into a church and, you know. Whatever it takes. Lord. I pray, whatever it takes, Lord. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Whatever it takes, Lord, to bring that person to his knees, because you get saved by going down, humble, by humbling yourself before the Lord, recognizing yeah. it's you know it's not going into a church and walking up to the front because of the promises of you can belong to this club, you can get this from God, right. you can get that from God. Yeah. It is because you recognize oh, the yes. lordship, the kingship of God. Yeah. All right, um, and if you're truly interested in that person being saved. And it doesn't matter to you, it shouldn't matter to you, what it takes, what That's that right. person has to go through yeah. to get to that place where they will finally submit to God. Yeah. You know, it's like, I, Alice and I, some of you may not be old enough to remember this, it was when Alice and I first got married, any, anytime you we went to a bank, you know, the banks were always trying to get you to bring open an account. Yes. You know, they give you a yes, toaster. Right. They yeah. give you a toaster. They give you this, or they. Yeah. That's why the churches are running today. That's right. You know, come in and be yeah. saved, Joe. You get a, We'll give you a toaster. That's not. It's not what it's about. Yeah. It's about coming to that place where you fall on your face. It's like Paul on the road to Damascus. It's coming yeah. to that place where, bam, yeah. you are down before the Lord, recognizing who He is. Yeah. And that's not what you, you can get, right. but who and He is. And that's when you recognize yeah. what a wretch. Yeah. What, are. Right, that's right. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's uh, just try and move along here a little bit. I'm going to go on to verse 7, 7 through 11, right? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give what is good to those who ask Him? Ask, seek, knock. These are all things pertaining to making requests to God, right? Yeah. Yes. Otherwise known as prayer. Yes. But now remember, you can't... (coughs) These things, we take them more often than not in the church. We take these as isolated verses. Yes, we do. This is the right. Sermon on the Mount, right? right. Yeah. Jesus has already taught about prayer. Yes, he yes. has. We call it the Our Father, right? That's right. That's He's right. taught about prayer. Mm. He's taught about, in just in the chapter before this, about not being anxious for anything. That's right. God knows what you need. He said, consider the lilies, consider the, the flocks, consider the birds, right? Mm-hmm. So your Father knows what you need, right? Mm-hmm. So... What's going on here? Is he talking? Think about the context of this. Think about where this is fitting in. Mm-hmm. It's talking about judgment. It's yeah. talking about how you deal with your brothers. It's talking <coughs> about how you deal with those outside the body who are the scoffers. Right. It's, yeah. This is talking about hard things, right? Yeah. Okay. So, in light of all of this that's being said now, I believe that it's important to refer to Luke's account of the same event. Okay. All right? In Luke eleven thirteen, where Luke is recording the same thing, he said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit, Spirit. to right. those who ask Him? Now, Matthew said, you know, he, what he heard Jesus say is, good, give good gifts. Mm-hmm. So, so many people today, the they equate this, okay, uh, I'm going to get a Cadillac, I'm going to get an Austin, stuff. I'm going to get, and they think of stuff. Yeah. Yes. All right? Jesus already said, it's like, okay, if you're going to pray, pray for your daily bread. That's it. Yes, he did. And then he said, okay, trust the Father for all the other things that you need. <coughs> right? Yeah. He knows what you need to wear, what you need to eat. He's already yeah. just got through talking yeah. about that. All the stuff. So in the context of this, That's right. yeah, yeah. what we need in order to do these things, not judge, but bless. Right. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit. We can't what do we it on our own. What we need is the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So we yeah, need we to be asking for the Holy Spirit. Okay? Yeah. Um, wow. We need the Holy Spirit in order to trust. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. We need the Holy Spirit in order to deal with our brothers and sisters yes. as we should. Mm. We need the Holy Spirit to deal with unbelievers as we should. Yes. Including the scoffers mm-hmm. yes. as we should. Yeah. All right. We don't have to convince God to love us. No. no. <laughs> He's already done that. We don't have no, to convince him to give us what is good. No. Yeah. But we have to get wisdom from the Holy Spirit yeah. in order to understand what good is mm. and what wisdom is. Mm. Yes. All right? But I, I, something else I wanted to point out about this ask, knock, seek. seek. Okay, see. Um, in Mark chapter 1, there's just a really interesting account. I wanted to just share this with you. Mm-hmm. Mark chapter 1, verses 35 to 37. Just, just listen to this guy. Okay. In the early morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went away to a secluded place and was praying there. Mm-hmm. Simon and his companions searched for him. They found him, and they said to him, Everyone is looking for you. Mm-hmm. Now, mine says, Mine says, Hunted. Aha! And Simon you're, and his Okay, companions. you're getting ahead of me now. Because that's, no, no, no. Okay. No, that's all right. That's because that's good. Alice has the New American Standard Bible, yeah. and I have the New American Standard Bible. Yes. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I have a revised edition in 1995. She has the prior one. Okay. And silly as this may sound, I much prefer this, but I can't find them anymore. Okay. All right? Because that is the right translation. The Greek word that's used here and translated as as search in uh, my Bible, Mm -hmm. in Alice's, is translated, and in the New King James Version, by the way, is translated Mm -hmm. uh, hunted. Mm. There's a difference. Well, there's a, there's a gigantic difference, mm. right? They said everybody's looking. Yeah. But they hunted. Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. Anybody can say I can look. Great right? degree, right. Yeah. Well, yeah, okay. You, I'm all right. Okay. Big deal. I looked around. Yeah. Hunting requires effort. Moving yeah, yeah. things. Well, you know, I I, I took Alice. Believe it or not, I took Alice hunting. I, Yes. Oh we my went, lord! We I'm safe as I, I took her hunting when we, when we were first married. Yes. Up into the, the uh, Adirondack. Adirondack Mountains, yeah. And this was a time when the hunting season was just opening. So mm-hmm. give me a little grace here. All, all the folks from the Bronx, you know, they, they cock their rifles yeah. and head just up. Walk and into the they get, no, they, they don't even They just park near the woods and start shooting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous. So uh, we got up and went up and started at midnight hiking into, into the, the woods, woods and hiked all night long in yes. the dark right. through the woods yes, to get did. deep into the woods. In October, by the way. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so but it takes effort, in other words. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there, there are other people looking. They shot a couple of cows or something, put the cows over, you know, deer. I understand. <laughs> God protected us because we didn't find any bear. Yeah. Hunting <laughs> requires effort. Looking is just casual. Yes, I understand. If you want to find the things of God, the blessings of God, it requires hunting. Yeah. It requires effort. It requires yeah. that we... That, ask yeah. is not just diligence, a casual Diligence, persistence. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good Hard words. work. Yeah. Diligence yeah. and persistence. And it, 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 crying out from the depths of our, our soul. Yeah. As a deer pants for water, so my soul for the Lord. I mean, it's, right. you know, it's yeah. just... This true, true longing for God and the things of God, not yeah. just casual. So I, I think that's that's really an important thing, and I think yeah. that shows clearly there in Mark. I think it's just yeah. interesting because everybody's looking for him, but they, they didn't find him. Yeah, they hunted they weren't for him. Looking hard enough. Yeah, they were hunting. They hunted, they hunted and they found him. Right. Right? right. If you want the things of God, hunt for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't just seek. Don't don't just. It's not just. Well, you're you're seeking, but it's not just. Okay, I'm not just glancing, glancing around, around, casually glancing. Window well, shopping. Right. It's it's really going after it. And and this other thing is one of the problems here with this verse. The problem. Not there's not a problem with the no, verse. No, no. The problem with a lot of people the way they approach this verse is it's like this name it and claim, claim it, it. Oh, that's theology. Awesome. Yes. You know, I mean, I can remember. Have you ever heard of that? No. It, it's a teaching that's very prominent in the church today, particularly in prosperity churches. Pros, well, I'll just say that, mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, if you want to, you know, you want a brand new car, just just ask God for a brand new car. Keep confessing, uh, right? yeah, and just, keep confessing. Yeah. and just yeah. keep claiming it. Um, 
that's that's not God. It's not the things of God. We want some commentary on the Sermon on the Mount from John. This is from 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence which we have before him. That if we ask anything mm-hmm. according to, to his will, his will that's, yes, that's the important thing. Isn't he it? hears us. And yeah. if we know he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request which we have asked from him. So, yes. yeah, so the key here, because remember, it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. And if you, and, you know, I talk all the time about faith leads to obedience and obedience leads to the blessings. Yes. But faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Yes. You have absolute, you have every reason to have absolute confidence asking God for things that you have heard him say. Yes. Yes. Okay? If you have heard God speak to you, saying, I'm going to provide with you a new car, brother, go contact, dial up, start searching for insurance. Mm -hmm. Go buy yourself some polish in the store. Mm -hmm. Because if God has spoken to you about that thing, you have every reason to have faith for it. And now you have to act on that. Right? Yes. And at that point, you know, if you want to make it blue, ask him for blue. What do I know? I'm, yeah, we, yeah, we have, right, yes. right, okay. But the thing is, what, what he's saying here is we've got to ask things according to his will. Yeah. A lot of times, there's a lot of bad preaching on, on faith. There's a lot of bad teaching on prayer. It's like, you know, if you say just the right words, if you rub God just yeah, the right way, genie. he's got to pop out of the magic bottle and start granting you your wishes. Mm, no. no, that makes no, you sorry. his Lord rather than no. him your Lord. Yeah. Okay? So by, and that's a burden, by the way. That's you know, it's, one of the reasons it's a burden is because you'll begin to trust yeah. the things or ask for things that you will not receive from God. That's right. Oh, okay. Ooh, and you will yeah. be you will be crushed because you think that your faith is failing you. That's yeah, one scenario. Exactly. That's or there's right. a worse scenario. Well, the worst scenario is that you get the things that you prayed for and they were not God's desire in your life. Yes. Yeah. You know, the people came to Samuel and said, give us go, a king. they wanted him to go before the before the Lord and said, Give us a king that we might be like the other nations. God said, Okay. How many generations well, tell you what, suffered for this? Uh, still today. Absolutely. Um, there, there are prayers that we ask. God, we'd be a lot better off not getting an answered. Mm-hmm. Right? Because we're praying outside of God's will. will. Yes. They prayed a prayer. And God said to Samuel, they're praying this because they have rejected me as being king over them. If, if, yes. we, if we had yeah. Jesus as Lord in our life, we would be praying in his will. In, in his will. Because yes. plus you have the word of God, which reveals his will to you. Yeah. All right? So if you know his word, that's why Jesus said, you know, we started out talking about it in John chapter 8. Yeah. In John chapter 8, when Jesus was having this conflict with these religious people, he said that if you abide in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're free oh, from the burden of the flesh ruling your life, yeah, and right. now the spirit mm. will rule your life. Oh, yeah. Because that was the desire of all of this. Mm. And that's how he designed us. The, the purpose of God's word here in our lives today, like I said, he's bringing words of eternal life to our spirit and words to kill the flesh. Oh, yeah. So, Father, we just thank, thank you, you, Lord Jesus. God. We thank you today for your word. Above all, we thank you for your word made flesh who dwelt among us, your son, Christ Jesus, who came into the world to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. Thank you, Lord. And, Father, we just thank you for this time together in your word. And I pray, Lord, that your word would build our spirits up, would strengthen our spirits, that we would have the power, Lord God, to want to walk in the spirit and not according to the flesh, that we would deny the the lusts and desires of of the flesh, Lord God, and reach out to you that we would live in the fullness of your spirit. Lord God, help us to take your word, your love, your power, out into the world. You said that in the beginning of this sermon, that we are are now the light of the world, the salt of the earth, that we might go out and do works, Lord God, that people would see you and and you would be glorified through our lives. That's my prayer today, Lord God, that you would be glorified in and through our lives. We just praise you and thank you for this time. Well, until the next time, 
God bless you, and may He use you for the glory of His name. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye, Greg.